Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we're talking about graphs and charts and how to read them. Our objectives for today are to be able to identify the most common types of graphs and charts that you might see on a high set or GED or a task test and also just in everyday life. We actually see charts in a lot of places whether it's the newspaper or in some sort of reading that we're doing. Um, they're a common form of communication. And we also want to be able to identify the key features that are used for reading and understanding these graphs and charts. So we're going to start with the line graph today. Line graph is easy to identify because you will see a line or sometimes more than one line. In this case, we'll look at a simple version of a line graph, which is going to show us one line and it'll show some sort of change over time uh, or in different circumstances. So, one thing to pay attention to is always to know it, what your two axes have to do with. So you'll see a vertical line, that's your Y axis. And beside it, you'll see the numbers 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then speed. And it says M slash X, right? So it doesn't say specifically here, uh, but my guess would be is that it is miles per second. And then down at the bottom, we see the x-axis, which goes horizontally. And you'll see again 1.0, and you'll see the letter S afterward in parentheses, and that is indicating that the time is measured in seconds. So it's always good to get a gauge on that um, and have an idea of what the numbers represent and what we're looking at. Now to read a line graph, you're just going to need to follow the different connecting points with your finger. So for example, here, if we look at one second, so find the X axis and find the number 1.0 and we follow that up to where the dot is on there, we'll see that it's in one second we had a speed of four miles per second. Now, if we go over to the two, you'll see we're closer to, if we go up and follow it, closer to eight miles per second. If you go to the three, you'll see it goes now above the 10 line. So now we know it's probably closer to 12 miles per second. So this is showing us that the more seconds that go on, the more quickly we pick up speed. And so we're able to read the line graph both in the specifics and finding the connection points along the way, but we also can look at the general trends over time, whether it goes up or down, stays stable or changes frequently. This is a bar graph. So for a bar graph, we can see a number of different varieties. And the one that we have here is going to show us three different bars at a time for each year. So again, if you look on what would be considered kind of our X axis on the last screen, but that bottom part, you'll see the years 2003, 2004, and 2005. Now on the other side there, if you look to the left, we have uh, everything from $0 to $90,000. And we can see at the top that this is for a cookie shop called The Cookie Shop. And it was the income between 2003 and 2005. Now you'll notice we have three different colors of bars here. So we also need to figure out what the bars mean. So our blue bars are the total revenues, the purple bars are the total expenses, and the green bar represents any profit or loss. So here we have, for example, in 2003, if we look at our blue bar, we see that it falls just above 80,000, but not quite to 90,000, maybe a little less than halfway. So while we can't get an exact reading on this because it doesn't have every exact line on it, you could probably guess that this is close to around $83,000. That was their total revenue for 2003. Now, to know their total expenses, I need to look at the purple bar under 2003. So again, go to the bottom, find 2003, follow the purple bar up, and you can see it comes just short of $60,000. So their total expenses were maybe close to around $58,000. Now we can find out if they had a profit or loss by looking at that number. We see 2003, again, we're looking for the green bar because that represents profit and loss. And we can go up and follow it across. It looks like it's just between the 20 and 30,000 mark. So probably around $25,000 of profit. 
So that's one years. Uh, some questions that you might see on a test might ask you to compare different years. Like in which year did they have the least uh, amount of profit? So you could take a look and evaluate uh, based on the bars. You'll say, okay, I need to look at the green bars because that has to do with profit. Let me look which green bar is the shortest, which one has the least amount. Well, it would be 2005, so 2005 will be the correct answer. So you may have to use some comparisons, but anytime you're using a graph, before you get into the questions, before you really um, try to answer anything about it, just make sure that you're taking inventory of everything here like we just did. Look at the bottom, look at the side measurements, look at the different colors and the key that you'll see there where it has the colors and what they mean. And then make sure if it has a title, be sure to check out that title too, because that'll give you a good clue as to what is going on. This is a pie chart. So this pie chart, I, I think I enjoy the most because it's the most visually interesting to me. A pie chart is always going to show up to 100%. So you want to think similar to fractions, right? If we have the whole pizza, if we ate the whole pizza, then we ate 100% of it. Right? So this is showing what slices of the pizza are worth how much, and the total will come out to 100%. So this one says percent of national population at the top, and then we see some different colors and notes about what those colors represent, and we also see the numbers, uh, the percentages of what they represent. So off to the side, you'll see that they also put a key, so you have all of those colors marked with the names of the areas. While most of the areas are marked on here, you'll see some of the smaller ones towards the top where it says PEI or NWT or YK or NU. And so they've included a key off to the side there that gives us uh, the colors and the full names of those places as well, should we need that information. So when I'm looking at a pie chart, um, one of the things that's most helpful is it's usually a little bit easier to see the sizes of things and how they compare. Like for example, here right away, I noticed that Ontario is the biggest portion of the national population. So you can take a look at the different sections and you can match up with the questions, uh, things that they might ask about comparing different areas about general percentages and the amount of a space taken up. So for example, Ontario is just over one third of the population. And I know that because one third would be 33.3%. And we can see there that it is 38.39%. And we could also think of that as if we looked at this circle, if we were to cut this circle into thirds, Ontario would be about a third of the circle. So again, we can use the information on this chart once we know how to read it and know what the information entails to be able to use it to answer questions. The last one we're gonna look at, look at today is the pictograph. And the pictograph is a way of getting an idea of uh, maybe how much of something we have, but uses pictures instead of using numbers or graphs or lines. So our picture here is of a person. And, and we can see this is about world population. So a couple things we need to look at, if we look off to the left side, again, we can see the years that are on there. And this graph was made before 2012. And I can tell that because I see 2012 on there is listed as projected, which means this is what they think it will be in the future. So here we have uh, the years 1650, 1850, 1930, 1975, 1999, 2012 projected, and 2070 projected. The key here shows me that one person, one of those uh, images of a person is 1 billion people. So in 1650, we only see half of a person. So what does that mean? Half a billion people. In 1850, we see one person, one whole person, which is 1 billion people. 1930, we see two people, so 2 billion people. And we can jump all the way ahead for our projected world population for 2070, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 billion people. So with that, we can measure these different things using the pictograph image that they give us. One reason that this is used is it's a more interesting way of uh, explaining and demonstrating data. 
but it's also a good way to get a visual representation of how things have changed over time. I can see very dramatically that there are way more people in the world population now and even projected into 2070 than there were in 1650. So that's one way to measure this information and to get an idea uh, for how things have changed over time. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you learned something new about charts and graphs. The best way to practice this is to continue to read charts and graphs when you find them in real life and practice with those kinds of real life tangible examples. And you can also find questions online, especially on the practice tests for things like the GED or HiSET social studies. I'd encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you get updates about all the new videos. And you can also check us out on Instagram and Facebook and at helmsacademy.org.